Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Monday, October 29th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Google has canceled its big Android event that was scheduled for today in New York City, fearing the impending Frankenstorm. But the Microsoft event is given the green light. Will they steal Google's spotlight? And how are consumers responding to Apple's iPad Mini? Here with more is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. The combination of three separate weather patterns over the Atlantic coast, including the largest of the three, Hurricane Sandy, could converge into a so-called Frankenstorm, which is expected to hit the shores of New York today. The state of New York, along with several other coastal states, has declared a state of emergency. Google will reschedule their event, but there is no word yet on when that will be. So how much um, is this anticipated event that's now going to be put on hold what announcements are we still going to have to wait for now? Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting, um, the, the fact that that's happened strategically. I think it's a, a bit of an impact for, for Google. They, uh, the anticipated, uh, the rumors would be that they were going to be announcing a 32 gig version of its Nexus 7, so an update to the Nexus 7 platform. And also there was some news that there would be uh, a potential announcement for the, uh, a new Nexus phone. Sunday Office Depot stores across the country put the new 32 gigabyte Nexus 7 tablets on display and had them available for purchase in store with a price of $249 and the 16 gigabyte version dropped to a price of $199. Since the Google event isn't taking place today after all, does this put out some of their fire? I believe so. I, it, quite a bit actually. I mean that with the Android event canceled, they don't really have a big venue for announcing Google's not in the tradition of having a lot of like television commercials and things like that so they're pretty much limited to the amount of ways they can get that news out Google Play is one way to do it they've uh, recently in the past have put their announcements on the front of their, their Google page a lot of visibility there but in terms of capturing the public and things like that um, it, it's going to be uh, it's definitely an impact on their ability to talk about the availability of the product anytime soon. Along with leaks about a 32 gigabyte Nexus 7 tablet to be debuted, which have now been confirmed by Office Depot's availability of that tab tablet, we were also expecting a version with 3G connectivity. Uh, was that version released in stores? Thus far, no. Uh, we haven't seen that, but that was a potentially one of the rumored uh, announcements that they were going to have at this uh, Google event. So. Um, we'll see what uh, what transpires in the days to come and how and, and when that does come to light, if it is indeed a product that they're coming out with. We've speculated about the reveal of a 10-inch tablet as well, manufactured by Samsung, which is codenamed Manta and maybe going by the name Nexus 10. How do you think that tablet would compete with Apple's new iPad? Well, it definitely is gearing up to be a competitor to that. Now, that of course, it faces a long road in trying to capture the imaginations and hearts of iPad users. Um, what, we'll, what we've seen is uh, resistance in terms of uh, just last week we talked about the Surface and its big debut. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are just really stuck in their, their systems of uh, Apple. It's the product that they know was the first Apple. It's very dominant. What, how Samsung and how Google align to come out with this, with this new tablet and the features, I mean, really we'll have to wait for the announcement to see how cool it is. Um, but, you know, all these things require a bit of savvy, um, a killer app, if you will, uh, killer features and things like that to get the tech crowd, to get the public crowd, to get, you know, uh, the business crowd into it. Um, th there's, there's a lot of challenges there. So anytime they come up with a, pro come up with a product, it's something that's significant and of note and the competitor's great. Uh, but against the iPad, it's a formidable opponent. Microsoft also has an event scheduled today in San Francisco, which is not canceled. What can we expect to hear from Microsoft today? The big announcement today is uh, the Windows Phone 8. A lot of people have been looking forward to this. So, yeah, it brings, it brings home all of those features and all those things that a lot of people have been waiting to see how, what they're going to do. There's a lot of fans of the Windows Phone, um, the prior versions. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, technology partners um, and, and hardware that uh, in the past has uh, been well reviewed and things like that. So, uh, you know, the integrated base, the integrated uh, interface uh, with Windows that it shares in common, a lot of people are, are excited to see that um, and see what the offerings are. 
With the Windows 8 phone debuting today, do we know when those devices will be available for pre-order or when they'll hit stores? Well, the first phones are supposed to be Nokia, Samsung, HTC. That's what Those are the ones that are expected. Um, they're supposed to hit the shelves next month. Uh, there's a number of details on prices, carriers, exact dates that haven't been made available yet. And they may be announcing some of these, this information today. Um, as far as pre-orders, that'll also be part of the information that, that hopefully we'll, we'll hear about today. What kind of features can we expect to hear about that come along with the new Windows 8 operating system? Well, again, with uh, a common base of uh, a hard or interface of uh, code, um, we'll see what what they've what's come to light in terms of uh, software that's been created for both systems, both the mobile platform, uh, the Windows 8 platform, with uh, you know ease of transporting these things between the two platforms with minor modifications. So that that interface will be one thing. The Windows 8, um, the tile interface, is, is a major selling feature. Um, it, it makes things very quick, very easy. It's, it's a very unified presence. So I think that, you know, in terms of what we'll see in terms of Windows, you know, the Windows 8 mobile platform, that's, that's the main thing people will be looking at. With Google being forced to reschedule their event today, what do you think that'll mean for Microsoft? Did they get lucky here? I think that very well could be. I mean, uh, the competing messages from, from both giants in the business, uh, Google was uh, anticipating announcing a Nexus 4, a, a new generation phone, um, potentially to be available very soon and compete with the, um, the range of high quality phones that Microsoft is anticipating to uh, be behind and announcing um, from Nokia, Samsung, HTC with you know, all the features and all the latest greatest you know, camera gear and different uh, you know, pixels on, on the screen and things like that. So a whole range of, of hardware um, against Google's offering, which would, which would be aligned with the, with the Nexus 4, um, th there would be uh, definitely an advantage from Microsoft seeing that this uh, unfortunate event has caused the Google event to be canceled. So we'll see, um, we'll see how Microsoft pounces on that and if that makes a big difference in the long run. I mean, they are kind of a third wheel in, in, the, uh, in the market. So we'll see you know, what that adoption really ends up looking like. If Google does still plan to unveil a LG Nexus 4 phone, do you think they're going to have trouble getting back in the spotlight following Microsoft's Windows Phone 8 announcements today? No, that, that phone uh, has got a, a number of, it has a base of fans. Uh, you know, the Nexus 4 is really like a, a high feature, a high end phone. I think that there's a lot of anticipation to see what Google's coming out with, uh, what they've done with the Android operating system. You know, there, there's a hardcore base of fans. Um, you know, there are there are a number of leaders out there. Um, you know, with you know in the in the smartphone market, um, including Samsung. And Samsung's got a comfortable lead in the uh, domestic market and international market as well. So, um, you know, th that all aligns with Google's offerings, and I think that we'll see great success with the Nexus 4 when it does get announced. Four out of the six available iPad mini models are sold out on the Apple online store, having their shipping date pushed back several weeks. Is this an early sign of Apple's success with their new device? It very well could be. Uh, there's, there's news that uh, they've sold out of a certain model um, of the uh, iPad minis. Um, so, you know, it, it's a bit of a strategy, if you will, of, uh, you know, their retail, um, their retail strategy. So we'll see these things play out, and we'll see what that means in, in terms of long-term sales and things like that. We noticed that the new iPad mini still has the older Apple 5 chip compared with the fourth-generation iPad, which has the upgraded chip. Why would Apple hold back on the iPad mini in this aspect? Why not give us everything at once rather than make us wait for the next best thing, especially when it's already here in the new fourth-generation iPad? That's a very complex uh, strategy when it, terms, when it comes in terms of uh, managing inventory, managing product cycles and things like that. Apple has a, has a history of releasing things in, in uh, little bits and pieces. Um, they probably have got you know, a, a lot of investment in the A5 architecture chip. Um, and uh, they probably haven't really seen the value of that chip really played out. So. There's a lot of pieces a lot of people don't think about, like, yeah, we've got all this great technology, but we haven't really, you know, 
fully utilize the 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 late the last technology we, we have all this production capability all the tooling and engineering it took to get to that phase the development and things like that um, you know that's part of it the other part of it is you know pricing strategy you know how it how it competes in the market how it plays out compared to other products um, that are comparable or the next step up or whatever the case might be so it's a very complex thing to really put together for those of us that might miss out on the pre-order, remind us when the iPad Mini will be available for in-store purchase. Uh, Wi-Fi models are available on November 2nd, so later this week uh, you'll be able to get there at the Apple retail store starting at 8 a.m., so there'll probably be a line over there. Um, now, uh, in mid-November, we'll see the Wi-Fi and the cellular, mo cellular models available uh, at that time. Well, John, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. For in-depth coverage on news of the day and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.